The African Union is holding its annual summit in Ethiopia's capital Addis Ababa Friday with security and health care among the top agenda items. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon highlighted the security concerns when he renewed his call for the immediate release of dozens of Nigerian girls kidnapped by Boko Haram terrorists nearly a year ago. Terrorism knows no boundaries and affects African countries in the Horn, the Sahel, and elsewhere. No grievances or cause justifies terror. At the same time, let us remember that counter-terror efforts that fail to respect human rights can make the problem worse. Well, Mr. Ban also called on the African leaders to avoid making undemocratic changes to their constitutions solely for the sake of extending their terms. Well, for more perspective, we are joined on the phone from Addis Ababa by Erastus Mwencha, uh, the Deputy Chairman of the African Union Commission. Mr. Mwencha, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, such a big day in Addis Ababa. Now, tell us a little bit about the uh, agenda and how Boko Haram especially uh, was handled by uh, the summit there. Well, first of all, on the agenda, um, this summit, uh, first of all, is taking, I mean, it's under the theme of uh, uh, empowerment of women. Uh, and also, we have had discussions and the leaders have adopted what we call Agenda 2063 as a framework for Africa's development, socio-economic development. Uh, the leaders have also exchanged views on uh, the various areas of uh, peace and security challenges, and that is how uh, Boko Haram comes in. Of course, as Africa, we condemn this phenomenon uh, of extremism and, uh, and rad radicalization, but also the way these uh, uh, terrorists are operating. I mean, you, you mentioned the case of Boko Haram, we have Al Shabaab, we have Al Qaeda, and many, many other such movements. Mm -hmm. So, as a continent and the discussions with um, Mr. Ban Ki moon, we are trying to see how we can work with the international community within Africa to try and uh, see how we can engage and also develop counter-terrorism mechanisms. Now, very quickly, Mr. Mwencha, you know, the African Union is often accused of being ineffective. How can you reassure uh, our viewers that you have some concrete strategies and plans to tackle particularly in security of the continent? Well, first of all, let's look at uh, Al-Shabaab, which is very much associated with Al-Qaeda or even uh, ISIS. We in Africa, took it uh, as our own challenge, and we have put boots on the ground. And if you look at the efforts of the last three, four years, we've been able to decapitate uh, Al-Shabaab quite significantly. So yes, we can have strategies, and we do have that resolve to do that. Um, on a wider scale, looking at the issue of peace and security, I don't know what you may call being uh, ineffective, because if you look at Africa today, it's not Africa of 10 years ago. 90% uh, of the population now live in areas of peace and security. We know we still have 10%. 10% is still too much. But if you look at 10 years ago, you would have perhaps stopped of 60%. So we're making gains. And those gains come in various areas. They come because we have strong mechanism for intervention. They come because Africa is also expanding in areas of economic development, mm -hmm. but also they come because there is strong ownership and resolve of the leaders of Africa to okay. tackle those challenges. Well, Mr. Moencha, we'll definitely call on you to kind of tell us a little more after all is done and said. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. Rastas Moencha is the Deputy Chairman of the Africa Union Commission in Addis Ababa. Well, on the other, one other significant development in is the election of Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe as the next chairman of the African Union. On the eve of the summit, Mr. Mugabe spoke to VOS Zimbabwe service reporter Sandra Nyaira. And Sandra now joins us on the phone from Addis Ababa. Sandra, welcome. Uh, 
thank you. Yes, the phone might not be so clear, but I know you had a very clear interview with uh, uh, President uh, Mugabe. First, uh, tell us how did you manage even to pin him down with uh, uh, an interview? I think uh, there's something that you call luck. Uh, I was just blessed that um, I happened to be walking into a press conference that is called uh, by the African Union Commission on NEPAD. Uh, that um, Mr. Mugabe had been attending uh, the heads of state uh, in meeting. Twenty heads of state um, and government were meeting uh, in a meeting um, for NEPAD uh, to discuss issues around NEPAD, how to fund Africa's development projects, how to empower women, yeah. and related issues. And so as we were walking in as journalists, Mr. Mugabe was in, he was, most of the leaders were walking out, they were walking out using one exit and we were entering using a door. So when I saw him, I just approached him and asked him the question, Mr. Mugabe, you are going to assume the chairmanship of uh, the African Union. Uh, what are you going to do in terms of um, you know, uplifting and empowering women uh, since this is a theme for the AU for this summit and this year? And then he started responding. That's how I got it. I was very lucky yeah. that I found now, him. Now, he, he, said, he, he said some things that have become a little controversial uh, about uh, what he thinks about equality between men and women. Can you just briefly uh, tell us what, uh, how he responded to those questions about uh, women and equality? Oh, yes, Mr. Mugabe said he doesn't think that women and men can ever be at, you know, at an equal basis. We can never be at par uh, simply because women uh, you know, bear children, they get married, and men give them babies. So as a result, women tend to look more towards looking after their children, looking after their families. As a result, we don't have as many uh, women you know, who are married in politics. There are a few, he said, but not as many as you know, people would want. And as a result, you have uh, single women going into politics. Uh, it was a bit controversial, of course, but, you know, looking at his age and where his era, that's a very patriarchal era where men still look at women as, you know, belonging to the kitchen and doing lesser jobs than men. So that's what I, you know, took away from his statement that, you know, we can never, women can never be in power with men. What an odd statement at a time when the AU is supposed to be talking about women empowerment. Sandra, thank you very much for joining us from Addis Ababa. Uh, Sandra Nyaira of uh, VOS Zimbabwe is service.